Today, inshallah, I want to say a few words with regards to anger, with regards to rage. And the reason is, one brother, he told me to speak on this topic. And also, I went to a masjid for a gathering. And when the gathering came to an end, this brother came to me and he spoke to me and he said, I have this problem. I have anger problems. I live with my roommates and they are fed up of me. So can you please help me? So this anger, this is an issue that we need to speak about. And this is when a person loses control over his brain, his behavior, his body, and he does things and he says things that later on he goes on to regret. The mental health experts, I was reading about this, they say, anger, it weakens our judgment. How? When we are angry, we feel like we are very alive and we are right and we are full of energy. But then later on we realize that we weren't right. And look how common this is. The mental health experts, they say, one in five normal people, they experience attacks of rage. So this means that they go on to do things, they go on to say things that later on they go on to regret. And because of anger, the happiness of many homes has been destroyed. Many relationships, they have become fractured because of this anger. So it's important for us to do something about this. My dear respected brothers in Islam, humans, they are sometimes happy. Sometimes we are sad. Sometimes we feel in love and sometimes we feel anger and rage, we, we feel angry. The scholars mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has given us two bounties. One is shahwat, desire. With this, we benefit. And the second bounty and ni'mah is anger. That with this anger, we protect ourselves from harm. So the one who doesn't get angry, how is he going to protect his family? Imam Shafi'i, you will be shocked to hear this. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, he said that the person who doesn't get angry, he is a donkey. So to save our Iman, sometimes to do the tarbiyah of our children, this anger is important. However, ek haddak. It has to be to a limit. Anything which is OTT, which is over the top, it becomes harmful. And the scholars, they mention that there are two types of anger. There's revenge. This is one type when we go for intiqam, for revenge. And the other type is, which is the anger, which is according to the Sharia. For example, someone, he missed his sunnah. He missed his tahajjud and he becomes angry. This anger is good. In Ibn Majah Sharif, which is from among the six Siha Sitta, most authentic hadith books, Ibn Majah Sharif, there's a hadith with regards to Abdullah bin Mughaffal. Radiallahu anhu, he was with his nephew and his nephew picked up a stone and threw it. So Abdullah bin Mughaffal, he said to him, don't do this. And then he mentioned a hadith. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you do this, you are either going to pop someone's eye or you're going to smash someone's tooth. But his nephew, he repeated this action. And Abdullah bin Mughaffal became angry. And he said, لا أكلمك أبدا that I will not speak to you again. When my teacher was mentioning this, he mentioned that there are a hadith like لا يحل لمسلم أن يهجر أخاه فوق الثلاث ليال يلتقيان يعرض هذا ويعرض هذا that it's not halal for a Muslim to stop talking to his Muslim brother for more than three nights. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said they both they come among one another. He's blanking him. He's blanking him. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said who's the best from among them who does salam first. But my teacher, he said that, you know, here, Abdullah bin Mughaffal, he was getting angry. It wasn't for any personal reason. Why was this? This was 
This was, look, I'm telling you the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and there's no effect on you. Whoever's not my Prophet, he's not mine as well. So this is to love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have books also for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I was mentioning that the scholars, they mentioned that there's two types of anger. One is, you know, revenge. One is for revenge, for intiqam. And the other is the anger which is according to the Sharia. And the scholars, they mentioned that this anger, it is not that severe. It can be controlled. Molana Rum, he mentions this beautiful statement. He mentions, he says that it's via the rain that we see flowers. It's not through thunder or lightning. So we learn from this that we shouldn't express anger uh, in abundance. We shouldn't get angry. If a person is angry, how should one deal with that person? This is a question that comes to mind. And our elders, they say, that if there's someone who drank alcohol, or he's taken so many drugs, he's not himself, whatever he says, whatever he, do, whatever he does, will you take it seriously? No. Likewise, if someone is angry, you shouldn't take whatever he says or does seriously also. Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, he was asked, what is the most difficult thing? And he said, the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said that what causes Allah to become angry? And he was told that when humans, they are angry with one another, this causes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to become angry. Another very important thing that we all need to know is, we get angry, we need to know what triggers our anger. What makes us angry? This is very important because when we know, then we can do something about it. And then hopefully, whoever is, you know, irritating us or making us angry, hopefully he'll stop and then we won't get angry. So there are things that trigger and make us angry. For example, our elders, they say that an arrogant person, a mutakabbir person, proud person, he gets angry. Someone who has a high post, he gets angry on those that are under him. Someone is deceived, humiliated. Someone takes a mick out of him, her, they become angry. Hirs, because of lalach, because of greed, looking at someone else doing well, this makes us angry. If you, if one of your beloved, someone that's beloved to you, someone that's near and dear to you, he's upset, this will make you angry. Another thing is waiting. Al-intidharu ashaddu min al maut. The taxi drivers will know more than me. Waiting. Sometimes waiting, it makes us angry, is more severe than death. The Arabic poet and the couplet, Al-intidharu ashaddu min al maut, is more severe than death. Also, if someone is not got good character, he's bad akhlaq, bad zuban, sakht zuban, he's very rude and harsh, he gets angry. Tiredness makes us angry. Hunger makes us angry sometimes. If we are in pain, this will make us angry. If we experience nine safi injustice, this sometimes makes us angry. If we fail, this makes us angry. If someone he smokes or he takes drugs or he drinks alcohol, if he's missing out on these things, this will make him angry. Traffic lights, they make us angry. And there's so many other things that irritate us. For example, some people, they don't like the way some people chew. Some people, they don't like the way some people eat. Some people, they don't like the way some people drink. Your next door neighbor, he might be playing loud music. This will irritate you. Or young children playing football and they keep coming to your front garden, to your back garden. This may irritate you. So it's very important for us to know what irritates us, what makes us angry. 
Another question that comes to mind is How can we control this anger of ours? And this is what the mental health experts they say And our elders they say It's all in the mind It's how you think about it And this is what our scholars say And then I'll tell you what the mental health experts say as well Our scholars they say that what we should think is If I restrain my anger now Allah Rabbul Alameen will forgive me In my khutbah I recited some verses Allah Rabbul Alameen mentions the qualities of the muttaqi The pious And he says they are the ones that spent in the path of Allah It doesn't matter what situation they're in Alladheena yunfiquoona fi sarra wa darra And then What other quality do they have? Wal kaadhimeen al ghayz Apne ghusse ko peene wale hai they restrain their anger, they control their anger. وَلَعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ They forgive people. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And those that do good, Allah Rabbul Alameen, He loves them. So this is what we should think when we get angry. Look, if I control my anger now, Allah Rabbul Alameen, He will become pleased with me. Or we should think that if I control my anger now, what will happen? Allah Rabbul Alameen, He will forgive my sins. And you should think that look, today, now, if I take revenge, He's going to take revenge. She's going to take revenge. So why shall I make enemies? And now I'll let you know what the mental health experts, they say. They say that you should change the way you think, change what you do, and change the way you react to this stressful situation. So there's three things, there's the thing that you know triggers your anger and then what comes after that is your judgment, how you see it. So for example, if someone is playing loud music, it's the way you see it, that's it. He needs sorting out, I need to go and deal with this person, it's the way you see it. Or you can see it this way as well that, oh okay, you know, it's just them, they're just having a bit of fun. So if, is, if this is your judgment, then you're not going to get angry like the way you were getting angry before. So it's all in the mind, it's just the way you see it, the way you judge the situation. And then after that, it's your response, it's what you do then. One bazurg, one sage, saint, pious person, a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he met shaitan and he said to shaitan, tell me something. And what did shaitan say? He said, La taghdab. He said, never get angry. You know why? Because when a human being gets angry, I play with him like children play with the ball. And now I'm going to mention some of the things our scholars said with regards to what we should do to calm ourselves down. Our elders, they say that we should read isti'adha. What is isti'adha? A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem seek I seek protection in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan the accursed what will happen the shaitan he will flee and your anger will cool down as well now let me share with you a hadith with regards to ghadab with regards to anger the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said inna al ghadab jamratun fi qalb ibn adam ghadab anger this is, uh, you know, the black uh, rocks that we burn, the coal that we burn, that's what it is on the heart of the son of Adam. Alam taraw ila intifaqi awdadi wa humrati aynayhi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't you see the swelling on the veins? Swelling on the veins, on the neck. Can you not see the redness in the eyes? And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? He said, فَمَنْ حَسَّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ شَيْئًا فَإِنْ كَانَ قَائِمًا فَلْيَقْعُدْ وَإِنْ كَانَ قَاعِدًا فَلْيَضَّجِعْ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that if you are standing, when you get angry, sit down. If you are sitting down, then you should lie down. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And there's another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you all know this, it's a very famous one. بَشِّرُوا وَلَا تُنَفِّرُوا خُشْ خَبْرِي دُو نَفْرَتْنَا بَحَلَاو You know, you should give good news, don't spread hatred. 
And what did he say? Yassiru wa la tu'assiru. You should make life easy for the people, not hard. And then he said, wa ida ghadiba ahadukum fal yaskut. When you get angry, be quiet. You should go quiet. I can remember my teacher mentioned this. He said, your tongue, when you get angry, is like a handbrake. If you control this, you will be okay. And the truth is, when we get angry, it's what we say to one another that we go on to remember for the rest of our lives. So a believer, he should be calm. There's a hadith that comes to my mind. When a group of Jews, they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they didn't say Assalamu Alaikum. They changed it. They say Assam. So there's a big difference. So that means peace be upon you. But they were saying, make the curse of Allah be upon you. Sayyida Aisha, she noticed this. So she said, you law as well, may, may la'na be upon you as well. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, no, no. Allah Rabbul Alameen, he likes for us to be lenient and gentle. He likes rifq. So a believer, he should always be halim, burdbar. He should be someone who is of patience and forbearance. Also, our scholars, they mention that when we get angry, we should perform ablution. We should perform wudu. Or if you don't cool down with wudu, then you should do ghusl. And there's a reason for this as well. Our elders, they say that because anger, it is fire. And fire is only extinguished through water. Or the reason is because anger, it comes from shaitan. And shaitan was created from fire. And again, fire, it only comes to an end through water. So when we get angry, it's very important for us. We should perform wudu. There are some signs. We should know these signs as well. Symptoms. We should know these signs of anger as well. When someone gets angry, his voice is raised. His face becomes red. He gives the dirty look. He begins to sweat. The teeth grinding and jaw start to clench. These are some signs. Now let me tell you brothers, some of the harms of getting angry. There are a lot of chances of experiencing and developing health problems because of anger. When we were studying in Darul Ulum, Blackman Darul Ulum, one of my teachers, they have blood pressure, so anger isn't good for them. So sometimes, you know, you ask your students and if they don't know the lesson, then it makes you angry, doesn't it? So what they did was, they said, okay, you've got one row here, one row of students here, okay, we're gonna have a quiz. We're gonna have a competition is going to take place. So what would happen is it became really like enjoyable for the students. So we were smiling about it and it became really like interesting and exciting for the teacher also. So he was smiling about it and he wasn't getting angry then as well. So it's very important for us to understand this is what our elders they say that if someone smokes, the cigarettes won't cause him that much harm as much as anger will harm him. You got blood pressure, you got headaches, backaches, you can't sleep because of anger. And then let's look at the big, big uh, other issues as well and the harms. If you are angry, you do something really bad, what's gonna happen? You're gonna lose your freedom. You're gonna end up in jail. You're going to damage something that you probably, you know, it cost you a lot of money. You're going to damage that. You're going to destroy that. Or you're going to damage someone that's beloved to you. Relationships are going to be fractured because of this. You're going to break your promise because you're there promising that I'm not going to get angry again. And then now you've broken your promise. Because of this anger, whatever you do, whatever your response is, you're going to be excluded. You're going to be fired. You're going to be made redundant. You're going to lose out financially. You're going to end up in jail, then you're not going to be working. There's, I was reading about this uh, woman. She attacked her grandmother. And now she has to work for, I don't know how many, hundreds of hours for free. 
So you're going to lose out financially. And then that trust is going to be broken as well. No one's going to trust you. They're going to be scared of you. And then you're going to fall into isolation. Khalwat. And then because of this anger, a person, he starts to hate himself as well. So my dear respected brothers in Islam, our elders, our scholars, they mention that if the husband gets angry, the wife, what should she do? She should think, Maybe there's something that I did, that's why he's angry. And vice versa. If the wife gets angry, the husband, he should think that maybe there's something that I did that's made her angry. And if one gets angry, the other shouldn't get angry. And the example that our elders give is a, it's a beautiful example. That if there's, for example, a thread, if I'm holding one edge, one end, I'm pulling and you've got the other end and you're pulling, what's going to happen? It's going to break. But if I've got one end, I'm just pulling it. You're not pulling it. It's not going to break. So if one gets angry, the others, they shouldn't get angry. And also, if for example, the wife gets angry or the husband gets angry, they should make other people aware of this. So the, the wife should be, she, she should Tell her husband, for example, that I'm, I'm angry. So, so the, the husband shouldn't go close to his wife for, for 15 minutes. Now the mistake that we make is, nah, nah, I'm going to cool him down. I'm going to cool her down and then war breaks out. So when we're angry, it's very important for us that we shouldn't raise our hands. You all know the hadith, the definition of a Muslim. Al-Muslim, man salim al-nas. And in the other narration, man salim al-muslimun min lisanihi wa yadi. A Muslim is he that other people they are safe, they are protected from the harm of his tongue and the harm of his hands. So especially we shouldn't raise our hands on, on kids, our children, because they will just go on to hate us for this. And sometimes they just need attention or they feel ignored or we are all humans, we make some accidents, they don't do it deliberately. So, so when we hit them, then we are not teaching them. We are not doing their tarbiyah, but it's better for us to actually do their tarbiyah. And it's very important for us, my brothers in Islam, that we should monitor ourselves. We should see that, am I getting angry less? Okay, this might be okay. If, if I'm getting angry a lot, then this is an illness. And if you're in the middle, again, this isn't, uh, you know, it's not good enough. And this is what the mental health experts they say if someone gets angry what should he do should go to the other room should change the subject there's so many things you know you go for a walk go for a jog go for a run uh, open a book book up or ring someone so you should just change the subject and when you are angry you should give yourself time don't do what your anger is telling you and when you are angry it's better to use I than you and also they say that by taking a deep breath this will also hopefully calm you down and cool you down they say that people that sleep seven hours they don't get angry that much and people that sleep over seven hours i remember it was the last day we were going to break up for holidays and our mufti sahab was giving nasiha to us and he was saying that make sure you don't sleep too much in the holidays you're going to sleep too much you're going to wake up next day, you're going to be moody, you're going to be grumpy, you're going to get angry over little, little things. So those that sleep too much or too less, they could get angry as well. And one Sahabi, he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Awsini, give me nasihat, give me advice. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, La taghdab, faraddada miraran. He said, don't get angry. And he repeated this again and again. And our elders, they say that anger, it destroys uh, our Iman like vinegar destroys honey. Uh, i just finish off with one, two narrations now. There's a story with regards to a father and son. So the son, he said to the father that, Dad, I get angry. So the father said, whenever you get angry, get a hammer, get a nail and just knock the nails in the wall. So first day, he, he hit 35 nails in the wall. Next day, 20. 
next day 10 and then he came down to 5 and then he said to his dad, I don't get angry now. So his dad said, when you don't get angry now, just start taking the nails out. So he took the nails out. They took the nails out and he said, dad, look, look at the wall. And his dad said, look, the wall is full of holes now. Look, even if you get angry, even if you get angry and you don't do anything in response, even then it will have a negative impact on your heart. So it's very important for us that we shouldn't get angry. And uh, it comes with regards to Imam Hassan radiallahu anhu that his maid servant, she came and she dropped boiling soup on him. And look at that, uh, during those days, even the servants, they knew the Quran. So she read the verse, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ The verse I read in my khutbah, that the pious, they are the ones that restrain the anger. And Hassan radiallahu anhu, what did he say? He said, I'm not angry. Look, if, if a child drops tea on us, how angry will we become? We'll criticize him. We'll say, you did this deliberately. Are you, are you blind? This, this is our response. But look at Hassan radiallahu anhu. And who, what could he have done? What could he have said? But look how cool he was. We need to follow the footsteps of the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He said, I'm not, I'm not angry. And then she said, the next part of the verse, They forgive others. He said, I forgive you. And then she said, the last part of the verse, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Allah loves those that do good. He said, go, you are free. So this is how our elders, they, uh, you know, acted upon the Quran and we also need to do the same. With regards to anger, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said there's different types. There's some people, they get angry quickly and then the anger, it, it goes away quickly. There's some people, they get angry quickly, but they cool down late. There's some people, they get angry late and they cool down late. And then he said, this is the last type and this is the best. He said, some people, they get angry late and they cool down quickly and this is the best. And with regards to anger, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِالسُّرْعَةِ إِنَّمَا الشَّدِيدُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبِ He is not strong, who can knock someone down. He is the one who is strong, who can control himself when he is angry. So I make dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He make us from among those makers and grant us the qualities of the muttaqi and make us from among those that can control the anger. Allah grant us his pleasure and make us from among those that are halimul mizaj and burdbar and those that are of patience and forbearance. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِي إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبُ Adhan has been called out so the brothers that haven't offered this sunnah, you could offer your sunnah.